Hey guys, Clayton here. Well, now that you just saw my worst of the year, it's now the time to showcase my best of the year. It's time to prove that 2019 was actually a pretty good year for movies. Again, like every other year, I didn't see every movie that has come out in 2019. And there were some that already come out that I wanted to see, but I haven't gotten a chance to watch them yet. Movies like Joker, Zombie Land Double Tap, Jumanji in the Next Level, Frozen 2, 1917, A Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood, among many others. And much like the worst movies of 2019, if you disagree with my choices on the list, that's perfectly fine. You're not an idiot, you're not below me, you're not a horrible person. We're all different in our opinions of movies, and that's a good thing. But before I talk about my best movies of 2019, here are my honorable mentions. Glass. Probably the weakest movie in the Unbreakable trilogy by a mire for its ambition and the performances from Samuel L. Jackson and James McAvoy. The Kid Who Would Be King. Probably one of the most underrated movies of 2019. It's The Goonies meets Excalibur. How awesome is that? The Upside. While it can be slow in the beginning and a bit melodramatic, it's definitely worth it just for the chemistry between Brian Cranston and Kevin Hart. The Lego Movie 2, the second part. While not quite as fresh as the first, it's still just as funny and clever as ever, with a really mature message at the end. Captain Marvel. Okay, ignore what the naysayers say. It's not one of Marvel's best, but it's certainly not the worst. It's still enjoyable enough. Missing Link. Another well-crafted and charming movie from Laika. It's a buddy road trip comedy with a Sasquatch and an explorer, and it's a great fun ride. Pokemon, Detective Pikachu. Probably one of the better video game movies to come out alongside Rampage, and with a great performance from Ryan Reynolds, it shows a great future in video game movies. Aladdin and The Lion King. I put these two together because, quite honestly, I feel the same way about them. They're not as good as the animated version, but definitely not awful. If I had to choose one, I'd probably say Aladdin. Aladdin tried to do things a little different while Lion King was more beat by beat, but it's still not a bad movie, both of them aren't. John Wick Chapter 3, Parabellum, another great entry into this badass series that I'm looking forward to seeing what they're going to do next. Bright Burn. While I felt the plot could have been explored a little more, I am, look I am really curious to see what they'll do with more stuff like this. I am actually looking forward to seeing more horror movies with superheroes. Godzilla, King of the Monsters. Giant monsters, though not really that great humans, but hey, giant monsters fighting each other. I got my money's worth. Crawl. Don't breathe with the goofiness of a creature feature. And what's wrong with that? Child's Play. One of the better horror remakes to come out, Child's Play delivers on the stuff we know from the original, but in bloody and gory ways. Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark. Pretty much a darker version of Goosebumps, but it provides enough chills to get even kids interested in horror. Good Boys. Pretty much super bad with kids, but it's a very heartwarming and hilarious little movie. Rambo, Last Blood. Stallone's famous character goes out with a bang in this bloody and explosive revenge flick. It, Chapter 2. Not as good as the first one, it does drag and it does get a little bit redundant, but still provides a lot of scares and a lot of heart. Star Wars Episode 9, The Rise of Skywalker. Flawed in a lot of places and the weakest of this new trilogy, but I thought it ended the saga on a somewhat satisfying conclusion. And finally, Shazam, probably one of the DCEU's best movies of the 2010s. With a lot of heart and a lot of laughs, this one is definitely number 11 on my best of list. Alright, let's prove that 2019 was a good year for movies. We're counting down... The Top 10 Best Movies of 2019 Number 10 Spider-Man Far From Home the grand finale to the MCU's Infinity Saga brings our favorite webhead on European vacation. Much like other Spider-Man movies, it shows the struggles that Peter has to go through balancing his real life with living up to his potential as a superhero. And it showed through Tom Holland's performance how much he wants to live up to his mentor, but still wants to be a kid. The movie keeps the things that made Homecoming so good, from the great performances by Holland and Zendaya, and a great villain portrayed by Jake Gyllenhaal. Mysterio is one of my favorite Spider-Man villains and they portrayed him fantastically, especially with the illusion sequence. The action is even elevated more from Homecoming, this time now that we're not in New York, it's done in a much bigger scale. Throw in one hell of a cliffhanger ending and you've got not only a great Spider-Man movie, but it makes me anticipating where they're gonna go with it in the next phase. Number 9. Rocket Man. If there's one thing I can thank my Debbie father for, it's for introducing me and my sister to the music of Sir Ellen John, and this biopic is presented in a fresh, unique way. It still contains some elements of your usual musician biopic, but it's presented like a musical set to Ellen's songs and it works. It even helps that the movie is told while Ellen's in rehab, and the ending result can be a positive message for those that are going through those issues, showing you can fix it. The cast does a good job, but Taron Egerton as Ellen John kills it. Much like Tom Hanks as Walt Disney or the main three as Straight Outta Compton, 
It feels like you're not watching an actor in a role, but the real person. And if Edgerton doesn't get an Oscar nomination for this role, we're gonna have some problems. With a great direction and a star to carry it, Rocketman is the biopic to prove it's still standing. Number 8. Us. With Jordan Peele's return to horror, while not as good as Get Out, it still remains a smart and scary new effort. The idea of a clone coming to kill and replace you is a scary concept to me, and this movie pulled it off with the way it's written, shot, and how the tethered act. The acting is all around great, the standouts being the kids in both real and tethered form, the Dar especially with her creepy ass smile that has etched into my nightmares, but the real MVP is Lupia Nyago as Adelaide slash Red, successfully playing the strong-willed mother and the tragic and terrifying clone. She doesn't get nominated along with Edgerton, we riot. While I said it wasn't as good as Get Out, I admire it for being different. It's definitely a much darker and scarier movie than his last, which is a good thing. And I also admire it for being a movie open for interpretation on its themes. It's a movie that made me scared and made me think, and here's to Jordan Peele for making more great horror movies like this and Get Out in the future. Number 7. Knives Out. From the director fanboys love to hate comes a very cleverly written and witty whodunit mystery. It almost feels like a modern day version of the Clue movie, with very likably hateable suspects with all reason to kill the victim. The actors playing the suspects all do a fantastic job making you hate their guts and hoping that get what's coming to them. Daniel Craig, despite his weird Foghorn Leghorn impression, and Anna de Armas are the standouts in how humorous and well written they are. And in de Armas case, you root for her throughout. Also Chris Evans is the king of snark. But what I love about it is that it's a very well made mystery. Not only giving us various twists and turns, even stuff you didn't see coming, but even down to the littlest of things like a piece of dialogue or even a certain item that plays a much bigger role in the grand scheme. If I had any complaints, it would be that the first 30 minutes were a bit slow, but I get it that's for introducing us to the suspects, and that certain political talk about border security that wasn't done as subtly as the rest of the movie. But with great suspects and intelligent writing, Knives Out still proves that the murder mystery story is still alive and kicking. Number 6. Klaus. While I'm sure it will become a new Christmas classic, Klaus delivers on a fresh and creative new take on the origins of Santa Claus. It does a good job on explaining where things we associate with him come from, and it's hindered by the charming Ryan with equally charming characters. While Jesper's story is a bit cliched, his friendship with Klaus is what makes me ignore that issue, as both Jason Schwartzman and J.K. Simmons have really good chemistry. The animation is fantastic, it's been forever since we've seen a 2D anime movie got a release, and this proves that the medium is still not dead. And with how the technology has evolved, I would love to see more. Add in a heartwarming story, and Klaus will be a new movie to watch around the holidays alongside the Christmas Chronicles and Arthur Christmas. Number 5. Jojo Rabbit On the surface, this movie might appear to be in poor taste or even done for the sake of shock value, but as you watch it, while it does have a bit of shock to it and the quirky, humorous dialogue Taika Waititi is known for, he balances it out with the horrifying reality of how Nazi Germany was at the time and the dangers of their closed-mindedness. The movie has a great underlying message about thinking for yourself and not blindly believing on what someone else says and is cleverly done with an imaginary Hitler. The acting is all around great from the well-known stars, but the standouts are Roman Griffin Davis and Thomas and McKenzie, who carry the film and deliver great performances, and Archie Yates, in which I want to see that kid in more comedies because he was hilarious. In a day and age where we all blindly believe the popular opinion, this is a movie to remind us to think for ourselves and be more tolerant to one another. Taika Waititi, you are a comedic genius. Number 4. How to Train Your Dragon The Hidden World The third and final movie in what I consider DreamWorks' best series is practically their answer to Return of the King. While it doesn't have the grand scale of 2 and Grimmel, as much as I like how evil he was, wasn't as interesting as Drago, it still delivers on everything else on what made the first two movies so great. Beautiful animation, amazing action and flying sequences, great voice acting, Hiccup and Astrid literally being relationship goals, and Toothless and his relationship with the Light Fury is being the cutest thing ever. But the heart of the movie is without doubt Hiccup and Toothless's friendship, in which, which is more like a Viking version of a boy and his pet, and how their stories end made me cry. The Dragons Trilogy will forever be one of DreamWorks' most timeless films. Number 3. Once Upon a Time in Hollywood Quentin Tarantino ends the decade with a more subdued film compared to his other works. While still retaining the smart and snappy dialogue we are used to seeing from him, it has a much more laid-back and heartwarming feel to it. I love hanging out with Rick Dalton, his stuntman, and Sharon Tate as they go through their day and Rick's attempts to get work in an ever-expanding industry. It's a love letter to the final days of the golden age of Hollywood, and reminds us of a time when the film industry was a bit more carefree, even to having it feel like one of those films from that decade. 
by not only making it a time capsule, but also have it be timeless. Some are a bit split on the ending, but Tarantino has fictionalized history before, and I felt it was a great build-up to how insane it was. It's a loving tribute to cinema in the past, and it's one of Tarantino's best efforts. Number 2. Avengers Endgame Much like Infinity War, Endgame is a culmination of everything that has built up the past 10-11 to 11 years, but this time on a more epic scale, and it successfully pulls it off. This is definitely the most grounded of all the Avengers films, showcasing how far these characters have grown and it's an emotional journey to see some of their stories come to an end. It still retains a lot of things that made Infinity War so great, from the direction, Thanos being a great villain, a grand score by Alan Silvestri, and the action, which I felt Endgame topped it, especially with a climactic battle against Thanos. You can argue it's fan service, but it's done in a more organic way and it's so amazing to see all these heroes join forces after 22 movies. While I look forward to the future of the MCU with the new characters, I don't think they'll top the epicness that was Endgame. And my number one movie of 2019 is... Toy Story 4. Now while we can argue about whether this movie was necessary or not, Pixar took a gamble of making a continuation after the perfect ending 3 left off, and it paid off. Toy Story 4 manages to still retain the heart, comedy, and charm of the first three movies, but still deliver on another emotional ending for the series. Probably my only issue is that some of the side characters don't get much to do, but it makes up for it with the new characters from the hilarious duo of Ducky and Bunny, the adorably engaging Forky, and Keanu Reeves as Duke Kaboom. It was great to see Bo Peep return, and her and Woody's chemistry is just as great as ever. The animation is easily the best out of the series, showing how much Pixar has evolved ever since 1995. But what elevates it to number one is its message of how things change, and that's okay. We have to move on after we've fulfilled our purpose. Thank you, Pixar, for delivering another great Toy Story to start and end the decade. And those were my top 10 movies of 2019. Thank you all for watching, and let me know what are your favorite movies of 2019. Listen down in the comments below. Stay subscribed for more because I will have more movie reviews out for you soon. As for what I'm looking forward to in 2020, well, here's a list of them according to their release dates. No, some of these release dates are due to change, so maybe the movie I'm listing will not be coming out this year, so only time will tell. Anyway, here's the list. Doolo. The Gentleman, Birds of Prey, Sonic the Hedgehog, The Invisible Man, Onward, A Quiet Place Part 2, Mulan, The New Moons, finally, Antebellum, Black Widow, Scoob, The Spongebob Movie, Sponge on the Run, Wonder Woman 1984, Soul, Top Gun Maverick, Free Guy, Ghostbusters Afterlife, Tenant, Jungle Cruise, Morbius, Bill and Ted Face the Music, The Conjuring, The Devil Made Me Do It, The King's Man, Last Night in Soho, Venom 2, Robert Zemeckis' adaptation of The Witches, Halloween Kills, The Eternals, Godzilla vs. Kong, Rhea and the Last Dragon, West Side Story, and The Tomorrow War. Anyways, thank you again for watching, this is Clayton, signing out.